Good morning and welcome to spiritual ministry class. I am so glad, so excited to be back with you guys. I have missed being in spiritual ministry class and I want to say uh, please forgive me for not being able to be in class last week. Uh, my grandmother, my wife's grandmother passed away and uh, we drove back to Oklahoma. Uh, Amber and the girls flew back to Oklahoma and John and I drove back to Oklahoma so that we could be here for all the funeral services. And I want to extend my thanks to the Acts Bible School, all the staff that were able to uh, fill in for me. And I want to apologize for any shortcoming that I may have caused and uh, any extra work and burden that I may have caused upon the staff of Acts Bible School. Please forgive me for doing that. It was not something that I could help, I promise. And um, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to be out so that I could be with my wife and family. And I got to speak at the funeral, had a great, great touch of God at the funeral. Was a godly, godly lady. Give honor to her and uh, to her memory. Uh, pillars of the church are not easily replaced. It takes years to grow in the kingdom of God to the point that she had grown. God bless our elders, and we need them in our lives. Let us never forget that. The role that they play may have changed because of the strength of their body, uh, but their role doesn't decrease in value. Their role increases in value. And so I want to again express my thanks for you to you for allowing me the opportunity to be away at the funeral. Thank you again to uh, Sir Go, to all the ACT staff. And uh, thank you to students for uh, giving me that day off. Thank you very, very much. I'm excited to be back in class. This is one of, I enjoy all my classes, but you guys know this is one of my favorite classes where we just get to open up and we get to talk. We get to talk about uh, the things of God. We get to talk about spiritual ministry. We get to talk about uh, how to be used of God. And I want us to remember um, as we progress in our lessons, and we have been progressing through uh, the definition of spiritual ministry, why do we need spiritual ministry, uh, why is it required, spiritual ministry, uh, to have results. We've talked about prayer, we've talked about faith, and then we are journeying into this section where we are talking about uh, hearing the voice of God, obeying the voice of God, uh, listening to the voice of God, responding to the voice of God, and every single one of these sections are building on top of each other because they are leading us into spiritual ministry. They are leading us into where God would have us to go. Uh, let us not forget what we've already learned because as uh, we go through these lessons, remember we are building on each lesson. They are not moving away from, but they are building. So it's, it's like spiritual ministries. Every section of our class is like a house being built. There's the foundation, which we understand is understanding and prayer. Then there is that next level, and then the walls go up, and then the roof is put on top, and all of the things that go into building the house. You, you don't tear away the foundation. You build on the foundation for building a house, and it's the same way with spiritual ministry. As we uh, begin to progress through the school term and through uh, the second term and through these sections of spiritual ministry, let us not forget to be praying. Let us not forget to be continue to be sensitive to the things of God because we don't want to tear down the foundation. We don't want to remove the foundation. We want to build upon the foundation. And because of that, that is how we are going to have spiritual ministries. And as we get to the end of the year, you'll start to see how all of these sections begin to fit together. And then if, if God, God willing, God does what I'm feeling, then by the end of the year, we will together be walking in a depth of spiritual ministry deeper than we've ever been in before. It's a journey. It's building on the foundation. And so I want us not to neglect the days of prayer because we're not teaching about prayer every lesson. Let's not forget that without prayer, we can't grasp the lessons that we're entering into now. And so let's remember as we progress through this that God is using us, changing us, and moving us deeper into the things of God. And we've got powerful classes ahead. We're going to talk about not only the gifts of the Spirit, not only the fruit of the Spirit, but we're going to even talk about how to deal with demonic spirits, recognize them, dealing with them, 
is going to be powerful. You do not want to miss any of those things uh, because then when you step out into your ministry, you're going to be able to remember those things and it'll help you walk through uh, the things that you're dealing with in ministry. So as we get ready to go into our second lesson on section number four, second lesson on section number four, we're dealing with hearing uh, the voice of God. So I want us to go to the Lord in prayer. I want us to be able to become uh, sensitive. I want you to pray, Lord, if there's anything in me that's not like you, I want you to remove it. I want to be used of God. I want to, God to speak to me. I want to be listening for the voice of the Lord in my life. So let's ask the Lord to, to help us. Let's pray. God, we love you. Thank you for bringing us together today. God, I pray that the Holy Ghost would just come in to this room where I'm teaching. And I pray, God, that the Holy Ghost would go into the classroom right now, touch every student, every man, every woman. God, I pray that the power and strength of the Holy Ghost would come down. Focus our mind as you hone our spirits in to the thing that you want us to be. As you put us upon the anvil and you create something powerful inside of us. God, help us not to resist the changing of your spirit as you change us, mold us, and make us. If there's anything inside of me that's not like you, God, I pray that you would forgive me of that and remove that from me. Don't let anything come between me and you, Lord, so that there can be a free flowing touch of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for praying with me today. I want there to be a free flowing touch of the Holy Ghost in our class today and in the next period also. And so today we're getting into lesson number two on uh, discerning the voice of the Lord. Lesson number two. Uh, this is section number four that we're in, but lesson number two. We're going to go into a very familiar scripture and kind of a little bit of a long scriptural reading, but all of it's very important. That's why I'm going to read it to you instead of just tell it to you. And we're going to go into 1 Samuel chapter number three. 1 Samuel chapter number three, and we're going to begin reading at verse number one. 1 Samuel 3 and verse number one, the word of the Lord says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Verse number two, And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. Now that's the first time. Verse number four is the first time that we read where God spoke, called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here am I. Verse five says, And he talking about Samuel, ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me, and said, I called thee not. Samuel, Samuel uh, went to Eli and said, You called me? And Eli said, I did not call you. And he told Eli, or told Samuel, Go lie down. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again. That's the second time. And he answered, I called not, my son. Lie down again. Verse number seven, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called unto Sam, Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore, now I want you to pay attention to verse number nine. It's very important verses. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he call thee that thou shalt say, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth, thy servant heareth. Look at your neighbor and say, heareth, thy servant hears, your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak for thy servant heareth. There's that word again, heareth. Verse number 11, and the Lord said unto Samuel, behold, I will do a thing in Israel which 
at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. God said, I'm going to do a work in Israel. Now, these are very powerful scriptures, and I know they're very familiar, but we can't talk about discerning the voice of the Lord without looking at the life of Samuel. We can't get into studying about how to hear from God without getting into Samuel and Samuel hearing from God because the Lord spoke to Samuel three times and Samuel went to Eli three times saying, I'm here, you called me. And Eli had to say, no, Samuel, I didn't call you. But on the third time, it finally dawns on Eli. Oh, this must be the Lord calling. And then he tells him that when you hear that again, if you hear it again, say, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. And then when the Lord did speak that fourth time, Samuel answered as he was instructed, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Now, these are powerful words because speak, Lord, thy servant heareth is very, very powerful because it does not mean the word heareth there in this language, in the King James text, it does not mean that, that I just to hear you talking. It's much deeper than that. The word heareth here literally means I'm listening. And there is a difference between hearing and listening. There's a difference between hearing the word and listening to the word because to hear it just means you are aware that it was said. But to listen to it means and carries the idea, the concept of, of not just knowing that it's there, not just hearing it, but listening carries the concept, the idea of I'm not just hearing you speak, Lord, but I am listening, two types of listening. I am, number one, I am listening for you to speak, uh, as Samuel was, and we'll talk about that a little more in just a little while. Uh, not only am I listening for you to speak, but I am also listening with the idea of obeying what you say. So he is saying, I'm not only listening for you, but I'm going to listen and obey you. That is a very powerful thing. So in lesson number two of this section, I want to talk about this from this title. Are you listening for his voice? Are you listening for for his voice. After the voice of the Lord spoke three times, Eli finally perceived that this was the Lord talking. And Samuel then was told, if you go and if he speaks again, you answer thy servant heareth. Because Eli made sure that Samuel understands. Uh, uh, you, you see, the word of the Lord's precious in those days. And so if God is speaking, you need to be listening for what God is saying. Let me just say at the beginning of this lesson this morning that when God begins dealing with us, we, if we want to have spiritual ministry, then we are going to have to make sure that we are listening for God. We've got to listening in the same context that Samuel was. We need to be listening for him and then we need to listen to him. I listen for him to speak. If we are not careful, we will allow the cares of this world and the many voices that we talked about in our previous class. If we are not careful, we will allow carnality and different things of this world to cloud our mind to the point that we are no longer listening for God. And I understand that we are all busy. We're busy with work. We're busy with school functions. We're busy with homework. We're busy with, I said a, that's bad in it, homework. We are busy with quizzes. We are busy with study. We are busy with evangelism. We are busy with church on the weekend. And busy is good. Busy is not bad. However, we must make sure that while this world is not slowing down, this world is speeding up. We've got so many things going on at one time. We've got social media driving on so many levels. And we've got things happening here and things happening there to where we literally feel like we're being pulled in every direction. You know what I'm talking about? We feel like this is demanding my attention and that is demanding my attention. Oh, I need to take care of this and oh, I need to take care of that. And if we are not careful in the middle of taking care of so many things in life that have to be dealt with, things that require our time, if we are not careful, we will start paying more attention to those things than we do the voice of the Lord in our lives. I know that 
that we're busy. And I know we've got things happening. And I know that some things can't be helped. They have to be done. And there's things that have to go on in our lives. But in the middle of busy, in the middle of evangelism, in the middle of church, and in the middle of all the things that we're doing in life, and all of the prayer, and all of the trying to figure out what the future holds in the next uh, few months of our lives before graduation and before we step away from the security of Acts Bible School into the very things of God. And I know that there's so much happening, but in the midst of all of that, we need to condition ourselves uh, that we make sure that we are discerning the voice of the Lord. I don't want to be so busy that I can't hear his voice. I don't want to be so caught up in other things that I can't recognize uh, his voice. I feel the touch of the Holy Ghost right now. I hope you're feeling what I'm feeling in class right now because God is saying, don't get so caught up with other things that you can't hear my voice. The first thing uh, that, that Eli teaches Samuel is you've uh, got to go lie down and if he speaks to you again, uh, then that you respond, thy servant heareth, or thy servant is listening. And so he went and laid down, no doubt, after being spoken to three other times. There's no doubt that when Samuel laid down, Samuel was intently listening for the voice of the Lord. Sure, there was sleep to be had. Sure, there were things uh, to, to make sure you paid attention to. Yes, uh, he had to make sure he was available if Eli needed him. And so in the midst of all of these things, he did not allow them to distract him from listening for the voice of the Lord. You listen for so that you can listen to. If you can't hear him speaking, it's very difficult to obey, to respond to what you have not heard him say. I want to get myself in a place of prayer, in a place of fasting, in a place of, of dedication to where I can hear it when God speaks to me. I don't want to miss what God is saying. Between uh, recognizing and responding is uh, this thing called receiving. Between recognizing and responding is a man or a woman that is listening ready to receive the voice of the Lord. We talked about it in our last session, recognizing and responding. But in the middle of that, there's got to be someone that is listening to receive. Uh, if we can't hear it, uh, then it, 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 then we don't know how to obey it. And God is very detailed when he talks to his people. He told Noah exactly how long to build it how many stories to build it, where to place the door, where to place the window. He, he told him exactly what kind of wood he needed to make it out of, how long it should be, how tall it should be. Because when God speaks, he's very detailed uh, about his will. Now, God is speaking to his people. There are things that God uses all the time to speak to us. And it may be that sometimes the reason we have difficulty hearing his word is because we've allowed ourselves uh, to get so caught up in the other things uh, that we are no longer recognizing when he speaks to us. I do not want to miss uh, when God is speaking to me. I want to know the details so that I can faithfully perform it. Now, I know that, that some of you may, may think that I'm, I'm, I'm just so hardcore, but I am. I, I believe that if God said, build the ark a certain way, had Noah not obeyed. I believe that when God said, Noah, pitch the ark with pitch within and without, had Noah not obeyed that, I do not believe the ark would have floated because it required obeying the voice of of the Lord. I believe that. And so we don't need to allow the distractions of this world to get into our lives and the busyness of our lives to get us to a place that we can no longer hear from God. Now, watch this. I'm going to give you a couple of definitions. And these are some things that, are, that I have found very interesting. The atheist. The atheist is a person that does not believe in the existence of God. An atheist does not believe in the existence of God. But while studying this and studying about how to hear from God and how to, uh, how to perceive the voice of the Lord in our lives and the direction from God, all of a sudden, I, as I begin to study, I realize that there are so many people that do not believe that God still speaks today. 
There are people that do not believe that God talks to his people, that God talks to his church. They do not believe those things anymore. And so in studying this, I, an atheist is someone that does not believe in God. And if they do not believe in the existence of God, then they certainly don't believe that God would still speak to his people because that which doesn't exist could not talk. We do not believe that way. We believe in the absolute existence of God. We do not believe in the absolute existence of a God or many gods, but we believe in the absolute existence of the one true God, the one that, that hung the stars, the one that said you can search from the east to the west and find none like me. We believe in the God that manifests himself in the flesh and called himself Emmanuel, God with us. We believe that Jesus manifests in the flesh is that God. We do not. We reject the idea of the atheist that does not believe in God and thus by default does not believe that God speaks. But I also found a, a very, very strange, a strange group of people, a, a people that, that it made me kind of just, you know, I wonder how can this exist? But I found that there are some that call themselves not atheists, but they call themselves Christian atheists. Christian atheist. How can this be? Or it's called Christian atheism. And so in studying this, I found that it is a person that believes in living under an ethical and moral system that draws its example and practices from the life and teachings of Jesus. In other words, they, they say, I'm going to live like that. It's good to love your neighbor. It's good to help the poor. It's good to live a moral life. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And they, they, are, they are a group that literally has been scientifically classified as Christian atheism. They believe then in living under the ethical and moral code uh, that Jesus taught. However, they do not believe that that Jesus uh, was the very God of very God. And they do not believe uh, that that God speaks uh, to his people today. So the atheist doesn't believe in God. They do not believe that because they don't believe in a God, then he cannot speak. Uh, the Christian atheism, a group of people that live under an ethical and moral system of the teachings of Jesus, uh, but yet they, they reject the supernatural claims of Christianity that God can speak to his people. They say, I will accept that there is a God I will accept the fact that, that he at one point had a teaching, but then they go and they say, but he still doesn't talk today. He no longer speaks to his people. And I want you to know, not only do we wholeheartedly reject the idea of the atheist because we know in whom we believe, but we also reject the idea of Christian atheism that, that lives under a moral code, but does not believe that Jesus speaks uh, to his people. I want you to know that we reject both of these theories. We wholeheartedly believe that God not only exists, but that God still speaks to his people. I want you to know today that we do not just stand in reverence to a God that exists, but we stand in obedience, ready and willingly listening for a God that not only exists, but a God that is looking to speak to his people. I come today to tell you that, that God is ready to talk to somebody. I come today to tell you that we're not just living like him, but we're listening to him. We are not just trying to follow a set guideline of rules and standards, uh, but we are also walking in the supernatural. And that, that supernatural spiritual ministry can only exist when we hear from the God that grants the miracle and we follow in obedience uh, to that God. We, do, we believe in God, but we also believe that God still speaks to his people today. So the real question is not 
whether there is a God. We know the answer to that. The real question is not whether or not God speaks today. That's not the question that we should be asking. There are people saying, is there a God? That's not the right question. And there are people that are saying, oh, does God speak today? That is not even the right question. But the right question is this. The question that we should be asking is this. Are we listening when God speaks? It's not a matter of if God exists. I've got that settled in my heart. There is a God. He does exist. It's not a matter of me living by rules but never hearing from the creator of the rule because I've got that settled. God speaks. The real question is not about the existence of God or the existence of his voice in the world today or in the church today, but the real question is, are we listening to the voice of God? That's what question that we should really be asking. I already know he's talking, but the question is, are we listening to what he's saying? I want to be one that opens myself up in prayer and in fact and, and, and submits myself to the Word of God and to the ministry of the Word of God. And I say, Lord, uh, I want to get in a place that I can hear you. Thy servant heareth. It's not a matter of me just uh, hearing that you said something, but it's a matter of me listening. Just like Samuel at somewhere around 12 years of age uh, laid in a bed when God first spoke to him. And then after all of those times, see the Bible said, in the King James text, it says that the word of the Lord was precious in those days. And that word precious in that text, it means rare. The word of the Lord was rare in those days because at this time in history, Israel was living in despondency. And because of this, they were lackadaisical toward God. And when they were not paying attention to God, and when they were not turned to God in prayer and turned to God with sacrifice, when they were not turning to God. God was not speaking to them. And so the word of the Lord was very precious. It was very rare. And so when Eli heard the word, oh, when he heard that God was speaking to Samuel, there, there must have been something that because finally it says that Eli perceived, oh, wait, that's the Lord. And he told Samuel, Samuel, you go back and listen. And at 12 years old, around 12 years of age, most theologians be believe Samuel heard from God. God. Three times before he knew that he was being called, God spoke to him. The Bible said in 1 Samuel 3 and 7, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. That is a powerful text because to those that know the Lord, they're going to be able to know when he's speaking to them. It is his sheep that know his voice, as we've discussed in previous lessons. And so it is that he's not trying to hide his voice. He is speaking today, but are we listening? Uh, Samuel three times heard the word of the Lord, but once instructed, uh, he not only recognized this is someone speaking, now he's got the revelation, this is God speaking to me. And now we've got to go to that deeper place where now it's Lord thy servant heareth. That word heareth there, what does it mean? Remember what we said? It means uh, I'm listening. I am listening. Thy servant is listening. And he lay there waiting on what is God going to say to me. I am not just hearing a voice, but I am listening. I am paying attention to what God is saying. And I am afraid that we are living in a day, and I love technology and I love modern things, but I am afraid that we are living in a day that we are letting things take up more of our time uh, and clouding our mind to where we are missing uh, what God is saying. I don't want to ever be in a place where God speaks to me, but I don't hear it. I don't want to be in a place. I, I, I have missed it at times and I don't want to miss it. Uh, I don't want anything to be so loud and so crowded and so busy that I miss that still small voice uh, that touches my heart that says, I need to talk to you. I need to give you a word uh, because it's vital that I don't just hear, uh, but I listen. There is a difference. It's like a small child that's told to go do something. Maybe it's 
sit down. Maybe it's eat your dinner. Maybe it's, they can hear it. Did you hear me? Yes, the child says, I heard you. But then they, they don't obey. They, maybe they don't sit down and you have to tell them again, sit down. And they look at you and they know they heard you say, sit down. Yet at the same time, they did not listen because listening is the act of obeying. It is the act of doing. And so when Samuel was hearing, he was saying, I'm listening for you and I am going to obey what you say to me. And in that moment, God began to show Samuel all the things that he was going to do. And it was going to be a change for Israel because God's looking for someone. You know what spiritual ministry really comes down to? It's God looking for someone that'll say, Lord, I'm listening. Wherever you tell me to go, whatever you tell me to do, wherever, whether it's another country, whether it's planting a church, leading a choir, working with the youth, being a youth pastor, being a pastor, being a pastor pastor's wife. God, whatever you call me to do, I'm listening. I'm hearing. I'm available. I'm not letting the things of this world cloud my mind. Here I am, God. I am surrendering myself to prayer. Lord, I want you to reveal your word to me. I want to hear you. Do you feel that way today? Do you feel that way in class this morning? Lord, I want to hear your word. I want to hear what you're saying to the church. I want you, God, to help us to, to be able to hear what you're speaking and do what you're saying to us. I want that, God. I want to be listening to you. We understand that, that God did speak to Samuel and God did move and Samuel did learn to be obedient. Each of those three times he ran to Eli saying, here I am. He was available. If we are going to hear from God, we have to be available and we have to be listening and ready to obey. If we are not available, then God will find somebody else that is. I heard someone say uh, a long, long time ago, they, they prayed and prayed and prayed for the city of San Francisco. And, and finally, after they saw that no one was going to start a church, they got up and they went and they started a church on their own. And someone said, do you feel called here? And they responded, I feel called here because God wouldn't God, God moved on other people, but they refused to go. And where others refused to go, I went and I started the church. That's the story that was told to me. That amazes me. And it also bothers me, the fact that God could move on someone to go, but someone was not ready. Someone was not running to him saying, here I am. I'm ready. I'm available. I'm available. Speak to me. I'm available. I am available, God. Whatever you want to do, however you want to use me, Lord, I am available to you. I am available to you. Anybody feel that way? I want to stop right here and then we'll get into the rest of this in our next class, but I feel the Holy Ghost. We need to pray. Lord, I want to make myself available to you. God, I know that if I'm going to hear your voice, hey, I know, God, if I'm ever going to get myself to a place, because the question, the real question is, uh, are we listening for your voice? You, you can't hear what you're not listening for in the spirit. You'll miss it. And God, I'm praying right now and by, for me, and I'm praying for the students, God, that we would not miss the word of the Lord because, God, I know that it's not just a rare thing, but it's still a precious thing. God, I want you to speak. I want to hear from you. I don't want to be in a position that I don't hear from you. God, I pray that I evaluate everything in my life and I make sure that my life is structured in a manner that it is easy for me to hear from you. I So many things that have to be taken care of, but God, the number one thing has to be that I have to be listening for the voice of the Lord. I want to be listening for him. Anybody feel that way this morning? You want to be listening for God. You want to be listening for the things of God. I don't I, I don't want to ask the right question. The right question is, are we listening for God? Are we listening? Samuel was listening for God. Samuel took the instruction and Samuel says, thy servant heareth. Thy servant is listening. That's what it means. That's the key, listening for and to God. 
And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. If the ear hears it, the ear shall tingle. The ears that hear it. Isn't that powerful? If, you, if you're not listening for it, you're not going to hear it. it. It says, at which both the ears of every one that heareth. And it leaves us with the idea, the concept that there would be some that would not hear, but for those that do, for those that say, I'm listening, God, speak to me. I'm listening, Lord. Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, God, I'll go, I'll do, I'll stay. Whatever you call me to do, Lord, I will do it because I am listening for you. I don't want to be a part of those that will not listen. The key to spiritual ministry is so connected to prayer and to faith and to hearing the very voice, the very word of God spoken into our spirit. In Jesus' name, God help us stir up a hunger in us that we would desire to listen for you. God bless you. Thank you for being in class today. I look forward to seeing you in just a few moments as we get into the next part of our lesson. God bless you. I'll see you in just a little bit.